Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, which today begins with speculation as to how the presenter and coilless interrupters would react if they suddenly found themselves rich beyond their wildest dreams. Would their lifestyles alter? Well, yes and no. Did you hear the fat boy there revealing a little of himself? Sometimes he does that, you know. He no. said that if he had all the money in China, I don't know why he picked China. He'd probably been in a Chinese restaurant last night. He said if he had all the money in China, he would still come and do his programme in the morning. Talked about the situation. And giving out to people and, and putting the cat amongst the pigeons. He said, I worry about him. He actually takes all that stuff seriously. Do you know that? He takes it all seriously. He would come in here if he loads the money. Now, can I ask you the same question? If you won the lottery... <laughs> <laughs> well, me, I'm a laugh. Yes. Because you you'd keep it all. Well, how you, much money am I talking? Okay, let's pick a round figure. Ten million. So if you won ten million, of course, of you, you'd give me one, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd make all your friends millionaires, wouldn't you? I would. Would you Would you help me? If you yes. won a, No, Siri, can I ask you something? Yes. If you won ten million, would you give me anything? Yeah. Of course what would you would. give me? I don't know. What would you give yeah, me? No, seriously. I'd, 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 it would be something. Would you help me? And it wouldn't be but miserly. It would be, it would be, it'd be sub- five substantial. Or ten no, it would be a substantial amount so of money. You really? Would you, what yeah. would you give me? Go and think now. Would well, ten, ha- ten million. Yeah, would you give me half a million? I know. Twentieth of what you have? Probably you? not. <laughs> really? Well, why not? Give me hundred thousand. No. Fifty thousand. No. Ten. I would. I would be starting at possibly ten grand. That's starting at miserable. Ten. So be a, a mere ten thousand quid. If I would, you say, I would just say to you, say, look, there's uh, I, I, what I would say. I would say there's a um, uh, we something take you and your <laughs> wife away on a holiday. <laughs> we, we, we break for you. That's all I, I would can say. see you saying that. I, I you can. <laughs> No, you I can't. can't. You can't see you saying that to me. No, but I can't see you saying that yeah, to so me. Yes, you can't no. see me saying it to you. Of I course you can't. Here you are, Jerry. Here's 10 grand. Go in and enjoy yourself. Go on a cruise. <laughs> no, I, would, I would just say, take yourself off on a wee holiday. Take and yourself off. And we'll look after all the girls. <laughs> well, you've always been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Well, thank you, Sean, in retrospect. That's, that's all. May yeah. I thank you for the money you're going to give me in the and, future? And, and an answer to your question, yes, I'd be out of here like a shot. Yeah, but see, that's the normal I, I, thing. And as a matter of fact, I wouldn't come in. Of course you wouldn't. I would just phone up and say, Mr. Coyle will not be at work today. Or tomorrow. Mr. Otis regrets yes. he's unable to lunch today. Yes. Many things are upsetting the presenter today. Dark forces are at work with the sound levels and a mucus problem is creating havoc throughout the building. Contagion stalks the corridors and will not be denied. Who's know. the people who turned us down in Belfast? I don't know. I started that record. It was going well. It was, it was cooking. It was rock and roll. And then somebody turned it down. Somebody made an arbitrary decision in Belfast. That's too loud. The situation, the situation. But how do you know? It could have been Ken. It wasn't Ken. Ken how do you know? Ken, Ken cannot turn this down unless he's in here. Ken cannot You wouldn't turn... know what Ken's got I know it... in, uh, out there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that Ken cannot turn down this radio unless he's in here. Unless we see him doing it. So Baron Belfast can turn it down. And I want to know who he is and why he decides to turn our music down when I'm enjoying it. Anyway, what do you want? It was the wrong word. What word? Melder? Uh, <laughs> the word that I... The word that I... The word that I... That I thought about... Listen! Actually, I have that too. Uh, listen, look at me. I've let, do you know I have Kleenex? I know you have Kleenex. I know all about that? your Kleenex. I got one tell this morning. Tell him what I did. I got one this morning. <laughs> Stop that disgusting sound. <laughs> That's the most... I hate people doing that. <laughs> I hate people standing in company. And people will stand right in front of you talking to you and they produce this hang, especially men. Like, girls can do it delicately and, and, and daintily, and, you, know, and, you know, but men, men just, and they, they just... What's I doing with that microphone? Blow their brains What's out. What's I doing with that And they're hanky in front of you. I know. And tell them, tell no them what I did. Apologies for tell it Tell them what I did this morning. It's the most disgusting sound tell them what a I human did this being morning. can make. Tell them what I did this morning. I shall. Well, right, we just don't know what kind of a person I am. Yes, this is true, and Emma is sitting here for an answer. She, she shall verify it. Yes, and there, there were buns, some sort of buns, bought in here this morning. Cream ice, bu- ice, ice, ice buns, cream buns, and, type, uh, uh, whatever they were. City of Culture buns, well, whatever they sent were, sent up from the City of Culture of specially designed, specially sprayed, and specially iced. Is that what they were? Yeah, you don't even know what they were. No, but because the City of Culture buns. I'll tell you why. Yeah. I'll tell you why I don't know <laughs> anything about them. <laughs> Because Emma, Emma said to me, she says, did you get an, a, a, a bun this morning? Yet? They were left in here. And I said, no, I didn't. She said, oh, wait, I'll get you one. And Emma went away and she was bringing in this box of buns. There were three or four buns in the box. <laughs> yes. And she was walking towards me with the lid of the box open yeah. for me to see the lovely ice buns. Mm-hmm. 
and you were standing in the middle of the office floor doing what you just did there now, blowing your <laughs> nose into a <laughs> tissue in front of everyone. People's stomachs were turning. And as Emma walked past him with the box of buns, he dropped the hanky into the bun. <laughs> Not my finest hour. He dropped the... He just, <laughs> just, there, take a bun now, he said to me. I didn't want one, you see. No. I and wanted... so the buns were dumped. <laughs> and I didn't You mean get you one. didn't eat the... Oh, that little thing, like a snot-stained uh, tissue. What, should that put you off, put that on top of your buns? For God's it's sake. Disgusting. You pussy, for God's you sake. really are steptoe. <laughs> I'm old! I'm old! I'm old! Very few programmes feature freshly minted poems about Hitler. Hitler is considered to be in the past. Not in this building. I, for one, tend not to forget. Now here is a story, strange as it may seem, of her Hitler the Nazi and his terrible dream. Been tired of the Allies, he lay down in his bed, and amongst other things he dreamt he was dead. He was all straightened out and lying in state, his little moustache was frozen in hate. He went from this earth and up to heaven went straight, and he proudly stood at the golden gate, but Peter looked out, and in a voice loud and clear cried, Herr Hitler the Nazi, you can't come in here. So Hitler turned back, and away he did go with the greatest of speed to the regions below. But the lookout angel was well worth his hire. He flew through to Satan and gave him the wire. So Satan said, fellows, I'll give you a warning. We're expecting Herr Hitler down here in the morning. Now I'll tell you straight and I'll tell you clear. We're too good for that fellow down here. Oh, Satan, oh, Satan, Herr Hitler cried. I heard what you said whilst I was standing outside. Oh, give me a corner. I've nowhere to go. But Satan said no, a thousand times no. So he kicked Hitler back, then vanished in smoke. And just at that moment, Hitler awoke. He jumped right up in a lather of sweat, shouting, Doctor, oh, doctor, it's my worst dream yet. To heaven I'll not go, that I can tell. But it's a terrible thing to be kicked out of hell. Thank you for listening. I'll be back tomorrow.